We shall now shift gears to meet the artist. A well-known artist who is a Bharatanatyam guru visited the DC metro area recently. His name is Guru N. Shrikanth. Just like Birju Maharaj, Mr. Shrikanth specializes in deep-rooted traditional dance formation of India. During his visit here, he held a number of workshops and choreographed many stage performances. We were one of the fortunate guests to have witnessed his dance in our studio premises. I would like to share that with you, but before that, let's hear a chat between him and Mrs. Lakshmi Swaminathan, who is the founder and director of the Natanjali Dance School. This is located in Bethesda, Maryland. Good morning and welcome to Name and Fame. This is Lakshmi Swaminathan sitting in for Neelima Mehra. I have with us a very special guest who is visiting the United States from India. He is N. Srikanth, who is a dancer, teacher, choreographer par excellence. Srikanth, welcome to Name and Fame. Um, would you be willing to share with our viewers a little bit about how you got into the world of dance, into the field of dancing? Namaskaram. Um, I'm basically uh, from a family which is deeply involved in a theater form called Bhagavata Mela. It's a traditional uh, art form of Andhra. Uh, years ago, a group of uh, artists migrated from Andhra and settled down in Tanjo district, Tamil Nadu, and propagated this art form. And I'm, I belong to one of the families, and that's how I got interested in dance. I was put on stage as early as um, five or six. And I started learning Bharatanatyam when I was eight years old. And the journey continues. So who was your first guru in um, Bharatanatyam? I started with uh, Pandana Loshi Shanmuka Sundaram Pillai, what we call uh, Nattuvanars, mm -hmm. with the traditional um, artists who teach music, dance, Nadaswaram, Tavil, all these um, uh, traditional uh, music and dance forms and I started with him and he was already old like then so he couldn't do my arangetram though he taught me an entire margam which is a full repertoire um, under his disciple Dr. Saraswati I had my arangetram um, he was there to witness the arangetram and uh, after that I had my advanced training in Bharatanatyam under world-renowned dancer Dr. Padma Subramaniam. How many years did you train under Dr. Padma Subramaniam? Mm, I did Gurukulam for about uh, six to seven years with Dr. Padma Subramaniam. Uh, could you explain to our viewers um, what you mean when you say Gurukulam? Gurukulam is like uh, the traditional way of learning uh, or like acquiring knowledge from your teacher. Um, you literally like stay at your uh, teacher's place like I wasn't doing that I would go as early as like 5 or 6 in the morning and stay um, till like 11, 11, 30 at night do all the household chores also help them with a lot of things and not just learning dance all the time um, but you know like this overall perspective uh, gave me a lot and I learnt a whole lot of uh, dance through observation I would say and um, yeah and sometimes like when we have late night rehearsals or some work at my dance school she would say like why don't you just stay back finish it off and then just go freshen up and come back and I, we were staying like say 10 minutes from my guru's place so I would just go like at 7 in the morning and come back at 7.30 so it was like that the 5-6 years I have not um, attended any weddings or parties or drama or theater, movies or whatever. That must have been some experience to imbibe everything with in the presence of your guru living with her. Absolutely. Watching her, I'm sure, choreograph, come up with ideas. That is just is just wonderful just for me to hear. It's a very about unique it. opportunity. Not yes. that uh, not that many students are blessed to go through that, and I think I'm really fortunate to be one. Wonderful. So when did you start teaching? Were you teaching when you were with Dr. Padma Subramaniam in her institute um, maybe or um, assisting her or just later I on? I was, yeah. I was a faculty member at uh, Nrutyodaya 
at Dr. Padma Subramaniam School and I came out in 1998 uh, due to personal reasons and I started my own dance school uh, called Mela Academy of Performing Arts in, uh, uh, in Chennai. Since I am from Bhagavata Mela, I wanted my dance school to have that name. So I named it Mela Academy of Performing Arts. Um, started training uh, students since 1998 and started traveling since 1998 actually, yeah. so to say. Uh, but you are also a part of two. I've uh, met your beautiful wife, Ashwati. And uh, so you not only give solo performances, but you also perform duets with Ashwati. Could you share with us a little bit about what it is to do a solo performance and what is extra special or uh, something more that you might get out of performing as a part of two, as a duet? Well, to begin with, we are soloists. She was my student for six years and we decided to get married. And uh, even before that, we would do duet performances. And uh, um, many a time, you know, gurus and my orchestra members would say like, oh, you both look very nice on stage. Why don't you get married and all? It was a joke, but then it happened finally and we got married in 2004 and we started performing together. That's when we realized how difficult it is to kind of uh, get to a midpoint because I'm a very strong individual inside and she is equally a competent dancer and we've been doing solos for years and then for us to kind of like, you know, get together and then like practice and do it like, like, you know, together was quite a task, I would say, but uh, interesting journey, uh, not that I believe, uh, I mean, I really don't believe in the male female energy dancing like exactly the same way. So when you see our dance, it's not like a Xerox copy or photo photostat copy, but you do see two different energies on stage. But uh, we are like 95% coordinated. Yes, but it, it kind of complements each other, both exactly. your performance and Ashwati's. And I know it is very difficult uh, when you're two strong dancers to be on the same stage and not try to overshadow or um, overtake another Absolutely. person, but maintain the right amount of um, complete, you know, to complement each other so that it the presentation looks really wonderful. And not just that, you know, when you're together, when you're, when you have another dancer with you, you're always like, have to be like, you know, remind yourself that, you know, you're dancing with someone. So you got to make sure you don't forget the steps. You do everything properly. There's no uh, scope for improvisation That's or like true. doing something. You forget something, you're like gone. People are going to notice it. It's going to be obvious. So um, it is a lot of challenge that way. But it's interesting for the public, I guess, because um, since 2004, people want us to uh, see us together on stage. So we're doing a lot of duets and um, it's working out well. Awesome. I know um, for a fact that you have won numerous awards. Would you like to share with our viewers just a few of the important ones that mm -hmm. you have won? In all humility and modesty, I do have a whole lot of awards. Uh, the recent ones I would like to share, uh, the Best Male Dancer Award from an organization called Abai. It's an international mm -hmm. organization for Bharatanatyam artists. Um, uh, that was a couple of years ago. Um, a few years ago, I got uh, the Central Sankit Nadak Academy's uh, Bismillah Khan Yuva Puruskar, um, to name a few. Congratulations. Thank I know you. it's a little belated, but um, you know, as uh, a lot of people say, I'm a huge fan of your work, um, not just as a dancer, but as a teacher. I know that you have been coming for the past five years um, during the summers to do workshops for my students. And it's not just my students that you do uh, conduct workshops for. You actually come to the US and uh, work with so many different um, dance teachers, not just in the Maryland, DC, Virginia area, but also uh, across the US. Would you like to share some experiences of yours as uh, a visiting artist here conducting workshops? Um, well, my first trip to the US was in the year 1995 with my guru. And uh, 1999 onwards, I've been coming quite regularly, not every year though. Of late, the last four or five years, I've been coming almost every year. Uh, before that, it used to be like alternate years. and. Yes, I've been working with a lot of teachers um, across US. Um, very fortunate, it is very uh, demanding. 
it is um, it requires a lot of patience it's not like teaching in india it is very different so you learn a lot working with these children here admire the way they um, you know like uh, dedicate themselves to this art form amidst all their like uh, you know like 101 activities um, i really appreciate that but from my perspective i think like um, it is uh, quite a task to teach these kids because you um, the first years i would say like the first few years uh, when I visited the US, they would like some of the teachers would tell me like, "Oh, Shrikant, you know, you got to be careful. You can't use harsh words. You have to be like nice to them." And honey and darling doesn't work with me, <laughs> Lakshmi. <laughs> so um, yeah, but you know, I managed. I'm half Buddha by now. <laughs> I've learned to be patient, but um, it is it is very rewarding. End of the day. Yeah, is there? Um Anything in particular you find challenging um, to teach uh, dancers here? You know, it's easy to teach students once once you've started them from like tai, you know, right. all the way. But here you come and then you see different styles of Bharatanatyam, number one. Number two, you see different levels of students. Um, so how, how do you work around that um, to teach them so that by the end of the workshop they are they are doing justice to your choreography. Let me put it that way. Mm, well, yeah, there are many styles, but to me, it is good dance and bad dance yes, I agree. to start with. And uh, um, yeah, what I do is like when I uh, do a workshop and I go for a uh, go to a teacher for uh, conducting a workshop, I don't necessarily change the style unless I see something that needs to be corrected drastically. I uh, correct them with the permission of the teacher though. Otherwise, I don't change the style. I teach whatever I have to. I tell them to learn the item and then do it their way. As long as it looks aesthetically appealing, it is fine with me. Yes. That, that is a wonderful way of teaching though because it is very difficult for students who have been either if they have only been learning for a very short time like three to four years so their own style is just setting. Setting up, you exactly. Know? Yeah. Or working with um, students who have been learning for like eight, nine, ten years where the style has completely set within them. So oh. I think this is a wonderful way of doing it where you just tell them to learn the piece and then do it in the way that's most comfortable Also, to them. Lakshmi, there's one other thing that uh, uh, you might want to um, sort of like notice here is that there are so many visiting artists from India who come like, you know, during summer and during spring for workshops and performances. These teachers and students, they would like to uh, take classes from different teachers, if they're going to change with every teacher, end of the day, they're not going to have a style of their own. Very so true. it's better to stick to their style and learn whatever we have to offer. That's, that's wonderful advice. Yeah. But having said that, I have to tell you something. Teaching Abhinaya, right? One half of our style, Bharat Natyam, Abhinaya, the expression is a difficult thing. Because it's, uh, um, even in Abhinaya, I would say like getting angry or like saying no or like all that is like, you know, like comparatively like easier than uh, uh, doing love or feeling shy or, uh, um, you know, like emotions like that. It's, it's very difficult for them to relate to. So you got to sit with them and then talk to them about it, tell them different stories or probably like, you know, enact it for them a couple of times and then uh, tell them to kind of copy it the initial times and then kind of internalize it and then try to uh, bring it on their of their own like you know it, it takes a lot of time teaching abhinaya is uh, a challenge but um, once again i would like to say that i feel personally that abhinaya is very um, personal and it's very individual it depends upon the person we cannot I find the concept of teaching Abhinaya challenging as a teacher uh, myself because the way a student, one student might do Abhinaya is very different from another. It also depends a lot on their personality and uh, how free they are with their expressions. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, because like what you're inside is what you're going to see when you're on stage, mm -hmm. right? Probably a stylistic version of it. 
but uh, um, we got to like instill in that you know if from the beginning I think otherwise what happens is like even a smile is becoming a big thing nowadays yeah. either like you know like have their plastic smile throughout their arangetram to throughout the performance or they don't smile they are very uh, tensed about the whole thing when it comes to the second half where we do a lot of expression oriented mm -hmm. items it looks the same right it doesn't create the impact yeah. um, if if you are a dancer you have to be good in everything or at least like try to do to the best of your ability yeah. i think it's um, in the hands of the teacher to uh, bring it out from the students very true so it's not just in the us though um, srikan that you go and conduct workshops i know for a fact that you were in tanzania and singapore Recently. earlier yeah uh, right. just a couple of months back so what are your um, experiences working with students um, there is it the same more or less as uh, the students you find in in the us um, the awareness is uh, equally the same or perhaps more in Singapore, Malaysia and all other countries. In um, East Africa, it is not the same. Um, the exposure is very limited and uh, there are like a handful of teachers and their knowledge is uh, again very limited. And so every now and then they would uh, invite me to come and take classes there, master classes. And over the years it has improved, but uh, definitely no comparison to the US. Okay. Um, I know for a fact, Srikant, because uh, you do the costumes for most of my students, that not just are you an excellent dancer, teacher, choreographer, but you have a very aesthetic sense of style. How did you get interested in designing costumes? It's a composite art, right? Yeah. It's a visual art dance. You got to be good looking. You have to, uh, when you're on stage, I think the presence is very, very important. That's what the people are going to see the first two, three minutes, what you're wearing, how you're looking and what jewelry are you wearing. I think that matters the initial two to five minutes and then comes your talent and then how well you dance and then camouflage, even if you're not so good looking or like, uh, your costumes are not so good. Still with your dance, you can capture the audience, but that comes later. But for, for a layman, it's the aharya, we say, the, the external factors which matters the most. Um, I don't know, from the time I started doing, um, like I branched out uh, in, like say from 98, I've been doing my own, um, items, I choreograph my own items and uh, I research a lot before I venture into anything uh, new that I'm planning to do. And I also make sure the costumes, makeup and jewelry, all that um, helps in bringing out the emotion better. So I do take a lot of care in my makeup as um, uh, I always say like, you know, there's a lot of difference, like even when portraying female roles in Bhagavad Mela between Sita and Rukmini and Devaki and whatnot. See, there is a subtle difference between each heroine. So you just cannot look the same. So you have to bring about and uh, yes, um, I love uh, costume designing, not just costume designing my own kurtas and whatever I wear is like very different from uh, what you um, normally see. Awesome. Thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful interview, Srikant. Any parting advice for students of dance? Work hard. There's no easy way out in Bharatanatyam. This was N. Srikant, our visiting artist from India that you just heard from. Thank you very much for watching our show, Name and Fame. Good day.